welcome. Um, so we don't have Andy Morris Friedman yet either. He's our new old member <laughs> back on the board. Um, yeah, I was wondering if there's new members that I should list. Um, the new member is Andy Morris Friedman, who's back on as a um, member at large. Mm -hmm. Let me make sure there's not a second page of this of people I'm missing. Mm. Let me just see participants. Mm. Cassandra is on. Um, yep. But I don't see Andy yet. So I'll just send him an email and um, oops. The meeting is launched. All right. What happened? I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll get started and, and yeah. hopefully Andy will join us. Um, we have a quorum? We do. Okay, good. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five, six. So very good. Thank you so much. Um, so the first order of business is to vote on approval of the September 27th minutes. Does anyone want me to put those up on the screen or? No, I don't. I don't. I okay. got them. Very good. I just reached Andy and he said, OMG. So he's going to be connecting momentarily. Okay, great. <laughs> um, does anyone want to make a motion in a minutes? How do I get all of the people on the, on the screen? Uh, Is there a view, view thing in the top? Gallery one? option at the top? No. It says view with a little thing of squares. Top right corner, if you put your mouse over it, it might show up as view. A view right there. Yeah, you want gallery. Uh oh, you got your video on, right? Yeah. Yeah. But now I don't have everybody else. Yeah, sometimes it does that. It only cut out to so many people. Yeah, but I get one, two, three, four, five members. Hmm. Oh well. Okay, this is better than it was. Do um does anyone want to make a motion to accept the minutes from September twenty seventh? I move that we accept the minutes as presented. Second. Any I, was, I was just going to tweak. Uh, I think there was a paragraph where we kind of talked about two, two um, applications in one number. I was going to just renumber, you know, to add a number in there. Good. Thank okay. you. Just to make it a little bit clearer. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Good. Thank you. I just want, there's a question that Amy Fiden, were you? Um, elected vice chair? I honestly can't remember. <laughs> I don't think we discussed it. I don't remember um, talking about vice chair. Um, I would be happy to help out if anybody, you know, if, if you weren't there is to back you up. That's not a problem. But I, I don't remember actually um, doing that. I don't think I don't think we did either. But it'd be great if you were. But <laughs> Um, so that's another change as well. Um, any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Any abstain? All right, minutes pass. Treasurer's report. The, um, I actually had done this one up because they... We, we held out for the December 31st figures and with a snow day for town hall on Friday, we didn't get them until this morning. So, um, but I sent them around. I can share the screen. Um, yeah, I didn't get them for some reason. Okay, let me share the screen. Please. Um, and I'm gonna oh. make it, let's see. I know it's kind of small. Um, does, can you read that? Can you mm -hmm. see some of that okay? Yeah. So up at the top, so this is the data as of December 31st. 
Um, we have available funds of 2,515,000. We save 500,000 in a reserve. Mm -hmm. And then we've got, the town had, didn't have the updated figures for what the split is. Um, this is what I've calculated based on what was awarded. Um, open space, 121,000. Housing set aside, 133,000. Available general fund is 1,760,000. Um, we also have expenditures have been awarded that haven't been used yet are 659,000. So a total CPA fund balance is just over a million, 3,174,000. Um, and those all agree with the town figures as of 1231. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty to work with. Um, we did get a large infusion of the state distribution, the total for what we've gotten um, for fiscal year 22 so far, which is basically all we're gonna get is 279,302. They gave us like a 90 something percent match, um, oh. which is the highest they've given us in quite a few years. So we also have, so this is the current fiscal year, which only includes half of the real estate taxes. So we probably have another 140,000 coming in so we'll be closer to 560,000. I'm not quite sure how this earnings works, um, but it's certainly our biggest year yet. Um, so that's, that's encouraging. And part of the reason it's so high is the state funds its amount by the receipts at the um, registry. And that went from $25 a document like refinancing a mortgage or a deed or something that anyone's filing at the registry, it went from $25 a document up to 50. Mm -hmm. So it basically doubled the fee. And the state this year has already said they're put, or the, putting in an extra 10 million on top of whatever the registry receipts are. So I think it'll still stay pretty high. Um, and I certainly think the real estate taxes will be comparable for coming up as well. Um, so it's, it's in good shape that way. Mm -hmm. And then what we have, um, this, is, this is what's still outstanding. And actually, I think we'll go over this a little later. Um, mm -hmm. That's a little farther in the thing. So this gives us, this gives us a, a base to start. Um, <clears throat> and one thing we can discuss is, and even vote on if people are, are comfortable with it, is how much to put in each set aside. And what we're supposed to do is predict what our budget will be for FY23 and take 10% of that amount. We often rely kind of on what it currently is um, or has been to make that decision. So, um, you know, this will be closer to 560,000. Um, I was thinking maybe 50,000 in each bucket would be a good, a good figure just to since we don't, we don't know exactly what it'll be next year, but again, this is just a, on our estimate what it will be. So people have thoughts on that or? Um, no, I agree with that. Is that one of your goals for tonight's meeting to do that? It's, it's helpful because then it, it helps to know what buckets to take out. If we approve the applications, we'll know how much we're actually dealing with in terms of these buckets. Mm -hmm. um, so it is helpful to, to are, vote on are, at this meeting. Are you waiting for somebody to make a motion? Um, that would be great. Well, I will make a motion that we fulfill our obligations to uh, replenish the set-asides at $50,000 for each one. I'll second that. Any other discussion? That was seconded by Edmund. Yep. Thank you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstain? It passes. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to stop sharing. Thank you. Um, and we'll, we'll get back to that when we're talking about the others. But since we have guests tonight with our applications, um, why don't we do those next so that they can 
um, go about and again I apologize for the late meeting star we'll have to see if we can figure out how to have that go smoother um, we've got John Schott and and they have um, their application does anyone need me to put it up on the screen or do you all have access to it we oh, got it right here would it help to share screen so that uh, public viewing this? Oh, that's a good idea. On YouTube would see. Yeah. All right, let me do that. Andy. How's that? Is that readable? Oh, God, yes. <laughs> Submitted on Pearl Harbor Day. <laughs> yeah. So we have um, John and Kurt. Would you like to talk about <clears throat> what you're proposing here? Uh, yeah. Uh, we we first of all we want to again thank thank the committee for uh, supporting us last year in regards to uh, the church clock, and uh, that is. Had started to be in process uh, over the summer and into uh, early fall, but at that particular point in time, we find we discovered that the steeple, some of the main timbers in the steeple, have started to crack, and uh, we've had a number of people come look at the church in regards to. Uh, different companies that actually do steeple work and repair them. And we have looked at them and brought them in a couple of times uh, to go over what they are finding. We actually did call in a structural engineer uh, to also go through and take a look at uh, some of the uh, deterioration of the steeple itself. We do have uh, a number of timbers that are cracking uh, towards just one of them is underneath where the bell actually is located. And a couple of others are uh, located uh, up in the bell tower uh, itself. And our worries have been that if we get any type of high winds uh, like we've been getting with some of the storms out there that we may be running into a major issue uh, with that steeple uh, becoming more unstable and we're trying to prevent anything from it falling at this particular point in time. And I think Kurt's on there too. He can add into it. Yeah, we uh, we have a lot of elements on the outside that are not accessible uh, without either having some kind of staging or uh, in in the case of some contractors use uh, uh, ropes and uh, I think they call it a, a captain's chair or something that they uh, access outside elements of the of a steeple. Uh, but a lot of the work we can't really see. Uh, we can't access it from inside. So there's a we're anticipating exterior damage uh, to the steeple, uh, specifically rot and uh, rotten elements. And these, these have to be fixed as well. Um, so we have to put everything together into one package. Mm -hmm. And uh, in other words, we can't, we can't just say we can only do structural work. We have to do all of the work because that would be the most efficient way to get one contractor to do, to do everything. And uh, again, thanking the, the committee for uh, 
backing us on on the clockwork we we don't want to put that clock back in until the structural work is done um trying to think you had an extensive um report from the contractor yes yes and uh they actually came back a second time that the one that we uh that's the contractor that we want to use. And uh, they've come back and, and climbed around up there uh, a lot higher than we got. And uh, on the inside of the steeple, uh, fortunately the very, the very top of it looks like it's in pretty good shape, but the, on the outside, uh, we're anticipating re-roofing the spire. And uh, that, so that's part of the work as well. And of course they can't, they don't even know the extent or the condition of the roofing and that's on the spire out there until they get up there and see it close up. We don't, we don't know yet. We don't know that when that roofing on the spire actually was either redone or if that is actually the original from when the church was uh, built. Which was 1808. <laughs> yeah, I, I think it's probably been replaced since then, but we don't really have any, uh, at least, documentation that actually tells us uh, that point. If you look at the, if you do actually look at the church steeple, uh, especially if you go over where the old library was and look across the street uh, up towards the steeple, you'll see. The back, the e let's see, the northeast northeast corner is where we're really concerned about uh, it uh, having some structural problems up there. There is a point of where it is actually, if you look up at, the, there's a railing up there. Uh, and if you look at that railing, uh, itself, the right towards the front of the church, there's about a two inch gap between it and the floor. But if you go to the back part of the railing, the railing is almost on the floor itself, which is where some of those timbers are on the inside that we've seen some really strong deterioration uh, from weather and or uh, the amount of uh, stress being put on it. Your pictures were quite telling of the broken, the crumbling support. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we, uh, as, as I said, we've looked at other contractors out there and we've, I've called around to uh, gotten some uh, other churches that have done some uh, structural work with their steeples and the one that we're looking at up in New Hampshire has a very good reputation and uh, they've been doing uh, this type of work for oh, somewhere around 20 to 30 years out there uh, itself. And the, reason, the funding that they asked or the end of the quote that we got from them uh, for it is way less than the last quote I got from a company down in uh, Connecticut itself. Um, they, we could be, they were quoting in that, in that retrospect, probably close to 400,000 mm. too. And th their recommendation was actually to take the steeple off the church and bring it down to the ground and repair it on the ground and then bring it back up again. Uh, whereas the company up in uh, New Hampshire, uh, they feel that they can do what they need to do with it in place. Now your your bid your application showed one hundred and ten thousand, so that's their bid plus extra that you're anticipating for the roof and an unknown. No, the, the roof was included in the uh, original quote that we got, which okay. was roughly around 82,000. 
what we don't know and what they don't know is, and we don't know is until they get inside that steeple and start taking things apart itself, we may end up with more damage than what we actually physically can see from the exterior. And so we just, we really don't know what that added cost is going to be on the repairs inside the steeple itself. The exterior pairs, I think, are pretty well set. It's really more what we're going to find on the interior of the church itself and the steeple. And the the church is looking to put in 10000 correct? And then the 100000 from the, the CPA fund. Correct. Does anyone have questions or... Is the intent to uh, jack it up in that corner, or is that the, or, and then replace those timbers? Do you know? So. I believe what they're going to do is they will jack it up on from the interior of it, uh, and my gut feeling will be is yes, they're going to replace the timbers that are in there, and they will reinforce most of what it is in there with some metal bracing, right. uh, et cetera probably have some of the lateral wind force bracing that was not yeah. uh, in vogue back in the 1800s. Correct. It, it, I've just, I didn't, not just, but we found out as we were talking to these contractors uh, itself, because I kept looking at the steeple and as I looked at it, uh, I said, you know, that thing leans back uh, towards the interior of the church. And I could never figure out why it would lean back into the church as opposed to leaning towards the outside of the church. So if it fell, it would fall to the ground, but it is opposed to falling into into the church itself. Mm -hmm. But I guess from what they tell us is that has always been a true statement that the steeples were always made to lean in toward the interior of the church. And the reason was because if there was a fire, then the church steeple would fall inside and not towards the firemen that are working on the exterior of the church itself. It was sort of interesting. <laughs> Hopefully all this falling steeple is just hypothetical. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me, Mr. Shaw. Uh, will... Uh, Will you be fixing why the timbers rotted to begin with, or just replace them? And then we're going to be back here in another another period of time to replace the timbers again. Our our goal is to to make sure that whatever we're doing is for the longevity of it. So in other words, if the beam can be, if they can cut out some of a beam and replace the middle part of it, uh, then so be. But we're looking at the long term of it, not just a, a Band-Aid approach. Good, thank right. you. And, and do you know if there's going to be any more repairs needed in that building? Is the, are you going to be coming back next year to year after for more money? Or As far as I know, and, and Kirk can answer this thing, question is, as far as I know, this should be it for a while. We, again, we apologize. We just had no clue until we actually got up there and we looked at one of the timbers and uh, uh, it split probably about halfway down the mm -hmm. timber. And it's not that it's an old split. It is a very recent split out there because you can actually see uh, white on the inside of the timber mm -hmm. itself. Okay, good, thank you. You're welcome. It, it, the spire is over 200 years old, so it's, it, those timbers lasted a long time. Yes. Andy, Andy you need to unmute. How unlike me to be muted. <laughs> um, I really support this proposal. Uh, I think it's an approved use of CPA funds, uh, restoring and preserving the historic view shed of Hadley Center. Um, I think it meets the three criteria 
for work on a uh, religious building, which is it does not uh, help the church proselytize. Um, it's not a religious iconography, and it's not the place where services are held. So I think the Supreme Judicial Court will be okay with it. Um, and I'm hoping you guys will let me do a video when, uh, when the work starts. It'll be our pleasure. They had a very nice letter from the um, Historic Commission in support of it too. Yes. But the, uh, the other thing I wanted to ask you uh, that we spoke about was getting an extension on the clock repair project since um, you may need extra time because the uh, steeple repair comes first. It's not yeah. due yet, so we don't mm -hmm. we have more time to, to okay. ask for that. Okay. Um, Just checking. I can tell you in a minute. Let's see the steep the clock. It's to use the clock repairs to be done by May two thousand twenty three. So it will be. If it isn't done okay. by then, we can ask for an extension. All right, then. Good thought, Andy, but there's time. It certainly is a is part of, when, you, when you're looking at Hadley from afar, that's one of the first things you see is that spire and certainly part of the town's, town's visual look. Any other thoughts, Amy or Diane? Any other, Diane, Denise, Cassandra, any other? Um, just to reiterate the Historical Commission's support of this project. Um, that's it. So um, John and Kurt, as you know, we'll vote on this actually in two weeks. Um, you're both welcome to come to the meeting or one of you in case there are other questions that come up or, you know, it's, um, but it'll be at seven o'clock in two weeks and hopefully it'll be at seven o'clock. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for, right. for working on Thank you. Right. Good luck. Here. We'll keep our fingers crossed when they start the work. And Thank you. You have good luck. And the project Thank would you. be inspired. <laughs> <laughs> very good. All right. Well, our next application, um, Greg Lesage is here from the Hadley Park and Rec, along with Diane. And um, I can pull that up as well. Um, here we go. Let me share my screen for, I won't leave it on forever, but just to. Um, Mary, I think uh, Andy touched on something on that last issue, which was that it appears to be that, you know, you shouldn't have any problem passing the SJC for being appropriate to uh, but that'll be on the list of things that will be reviewed by the gentleman in Boston from the association. Well, I mean, last time I sent him everything in part because it was my first time doing it. And he spent an hour going through all the reasons and all the, and I'm not sure if we feel it's really an obvious use if we need to run it by him. Okay. Um, I think this does meet all the, it's certainly historic. He's got the, the commission, historic commission letter so i don't i don't have any question but it, i mean if anyone else wants me to do it i'd be glad to but um i think i think it's good to ask him especially for ones that we're questioning if there's concerns or gray areas or we're just not sure i think that's a good use of, of running things by him andy do you agree you've had more experience working with stewart um it's always good to talk to stewart Always, you know, so much. Mm -hmm. But I think these two projects are both pretty easy calls in terms of the approved use question. So I don't think you have to call them, but, you know, it couldn't hurt. Um, we're early too, I think. He, he has his busy times. And... Yeah. Yeah, we're early oh. is good because in the busy times, every town in Massachusetts is asking for this information. Right. So it's good that we're early. Yeah. Um, so we have the application for Zaturka Park. And Greg, why don't you describe this some? Okay, awesome. 
Um, so when I first got to uh, Hadley, one of the first things I did was went and checked out the Jerker Park um, with, uh, with Jim Shea. And it's a beautiful open space. Uh, I walked around the, the walking path. Uh, actually saw, I've ne I'd never seen a Blue Jay before. <laughs> I saw a Blue Jay flying. It just, it's a beautiful space. Um, but right now it's just kind of that. It's a big open space. Um, I really haven't seen, other than the elementary school, uh, an area where really where kids that aren't in the school can can have to go play at a playground. Um, kind of what, what we'd like to do with the Turka is, is kind of outfit outfit that area and, and, and make it a park. Um, so what I'd like to do is get uh, two playground um, playscapes, one of them for that's kind of designed for kids two to five years old. Uh, right now, there's two open spaces there that already have the foundation and like the, the chips and everything for, for playscapes. Um, so one, on one of those areas, they're both about 45 by 60 foot open spaces. Um, so in one of those, I'd like to put a playscape that's kind of made for two to five-year-olds. Um, in the other area, I'd like to put a playscape that's, that's made for five to 12-year-olds. Um, along with that, there's a walking path that, that kind of goes around Zadarka Park. It's got a lot of kind of cement spaces for um, benches, workout areas, or whatever it may be. Um, what I'd like to do is put four uh, six-foot benches kind of spread out around that walking path. Um, there's also about an eight by eight um, cement area that's kind of right between those two areas for playscapes. So I'd like to put a picnic table with kind of a, zigo, a gazebo cover over that table um, in, in that open space. So I guess really the ask is, is for help like, um, purchasing that equipment. And you're estimating the cost of all of that, the playground equipment, the benches, the picnic table, the covering over the picnic table to be about 45,000, correct? Correct, um, correct. And, I, and I've looked around at just, um, some different things, but that's, that'll cover the cost of the, like I said, that'll cover the cost of the equipment. And then um, with, the C, with Park and Rec putting in 50% and correct. then asking for 22,500, 50% from the CPA. Right. So Turka is, it's beautiful. It's a great space. It's got, it does look unfinished. It's, it's got the walkways with these empty concrete spots here and there. And, and, um, but what, what's been done has been beautiful. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the foundation's there for us, you know what I mean? It, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful space and now it's just time to, to move forward and make it more, more user-friendly. Um, you know, I've got a four-year-old and there's really nowhere to take him. <laughs> you know, if school's in session, we can't go to the school. So there's really, there's really not much we can do. Um, so it'd be great to have uh, some free opportunities for families to enjoy. Nice. People's thoughts? We have a visual or plan that we could put up to share. Uh, I don't right now, no. I, um, I, I can put a, um, put a map together um, before the next meeting okay. um, with kind of how the layout's going to look, though. That would be okay. good. I, I think one of the stumbling points we hit uh, on a previous application was uh, equipment has to be fixed. It can't be movable, I, if, if I'm not misquoting. I think this will be pretty fixed. But yeah, they're, they're pretty big pieces. Um, I think they're about both of them around 40 to 45 feet long. Um, I mean, they're, they're big pieces of equipment. And then we can, the, the benches and the, the gazebo, those can all be bolted. I mean, the cement slabs are already there for those things. You know, last time, the picnic tables, um, we did fund the pavilion with the CPA funds, which made it easier to approve the picnic tables. And Saturka Park has had a lot of money <laughs> to fund it, to get it where it is, which I think makes it easier to, to fund, um, you know, finishing off what's needed, but. Um. I have a question on um, just where it, at Saturka Park. So will the kids still be able to slide? I know maybe they're not supposed to slide, but the truth is that I do know a lot of kids go there in the winter to slide. So I would hope that, you know, I'm just thinking that it'd be a way so that if it's covered in snow, they won't get hurt. If yeah, no, the, 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 the lot that's already there for those playground um, for that playground equipment yeah. is pretty far down the hill. Um, there's a lot of open space between that hill 
and really even the walking path. Um, at some point, it may be beneficial to utilize some of that open space. Um, but I think for this project here, there, everything's going to kind of work within that within that circle walking path. I mean, even those benches will kind of be spread out around that. There's only four of those six foot benches, so we can spread those out kind of around that path um, where they're away from that that picnic table. Right. I think in the past, um, Amy, we had talked about the pavilion kind of being at the base of where kids would illegally slide, um, <laughs> mine included, unfortunately. Um, but what would happen is um, we're not considering down at that end. And I think that was more of a grand um, idea of where we might be able to have like a summer camp and have a stage in that pavilion and all there. And that is not where our group currently is really aiming to go with it. Right. Is this something that you or the DPW can install or is it something that an outside company would need to do? Um, I'm not sure yet. I'm working with Home Depot. <laughs> Actually, they've, they've been really uh, generous with us. So I'm working with them in the equipment and installation. So um, we're not asking for, for any funds. The only funds we're really asking for is, is, is to help purchase that equipment. Um, but we're gonna, we'll have to get someone to help install those things. I'm sorry, did you just say that the money that you're requesting from CPA is just to purchase the materials and not to install them? Correct. Uh, is is the park and recs share of the money for the installation or is that also just for the purchasing of the um, Right now I have park and rec paying half of, for half of the equipment and then for the installation and everything. So the only thing we're requesting is to, is to help cover half the cost of the equipment. I see, okay. I was not clear on that. Um, should I keep going? Sure. Um, yeah, if you have more questions. Yeah. Uh, um, I would definitely like a map of where the uh, improvements are going to be located. You know, just like a, a screenshot of a Google map with circles of where you expect them to be. Um, uh, I'd also like a more detailed budget breakdown uh, for each piece of equipment and for the benches. So we have the possibility of approving partial uh, instead of the whole thing, if that's what we decide to do. Um, and uh, there was one other thing. Um, I, don't, I don't know if you know the history of this project, but it's the closest thing we've had to controversy in the CPA. Um, for various reasons. Um, and I think you're going to have a hard time getting town meeting to approve this. Um, so I would marshal your forces, uh, get some parents to write letters saying that they'd use the equipment. Um, uh, that helps. You could do a poll of people who, to do, who use park and rec services if they would go and use it. Uh, that helped last time. Um, consider breaking the project into stages, uh, phases. Uh, I don't know, that can go either way because some people don't like you coming back and back and back for little chunks. You'll just have to gauge what your constituency is willing to support you on. Um, and then you're going to have to have somebody speak to it at town meeting. Mm -hmm. um, are you a town resident? No, sir, I'm not. Well, then you're, you're either going to have to get permission to speak and present, or you're going to have to find a town person to present for you. So those, that's, that's my advice. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll put that stuff together. Yeah, but I think it is approved use. Like Mary said, we use CPA funds to create the park, and so we can use it to uh, make, make improvements. Awesome. I think, um, I think too, this is very different from the last one um, that we, you know, <laughs> the last one that was for the park and rec, that was a pretty specific 
exercise thing that might not have appealed to a wide range of people and and um, a larger price tag. A larger price tag over a hundred thousand. Yeah, um, this is and this seems like a good way that it would meet people wanting to take a stroll and have a bench to sit on. People with picnics that might want to go for you know a bite to eat or just a break and and then to have the children's equipment I think is a really a, a good use too so I, I think it'll I think it is we've put a lot of money into the Turka Park to get it where it is um, but I think that um, it's you know I think this is different so hopefully um, it'll be seen but I, I agree a map would be very helpful with more okay. of a concept. Right. Uh, and, and the third thing that I would like that I forgot to, to mention is a, a picture from a catalog of what the equipment will look like, what the improvements will look like when it's set up. That also, that also helps us. And then yeah. if, you if you have that information available at town meeting, you don't need 150 copies, but just something for people to look at. Uh, okay. That'll also help you. Okay. Yeah, I can get that stuff to you guys before the next meeting that y'all have. Thank you. I recall, I don't know if it was the last town meeting or one of the previous ones when uh, Park and Rec got shot down on this. Um, one of the town persons got up and spoke about the problems with the drainage. So you might want to be prepared to answer that. I think it was June 2020. Okay. Yeah, it was a hot day. It was a very hot day. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm sure we can count on Dr. Zagrada giving his opinion of spending I more money on the Turka Park. <laughs> he, he's a good guy. All right. Any, any other questions for Greg or Diane? Anyone else want to say anything about this? You know, I think uh, I think Park and Rec should consider devising a long-range plan to hire somebody to do a park plan for you, so other parts of town can know what's going to happen in the future, uh, and set a roadmap uh, for how you want to proceed. And you can use CPA money to hire somebody to make that kind of plan. Awesome, awesome. And then you get to say, "Well, we're doing this in the plan that was approved on so and so." You don't have to have the argument over and over again. Right. So consider that as a separate project. Yeah. Awesome. There Thank you. Might be other dense areas like Shattuck Road or something where there might be children that would benefit from a park or, or right. parents of adults that, I mean, parents of kids that need to get out and use the park. <laughs> get that. Cool. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Greg. We'll see you in two weeks. Awesome. Thanks for your time. And Thanks, guys. If you get anything before the meeting, you can send it to me and I can easily get it out to everyone. So Okay. I'll, I'll put all that stuff together before then to show us. I appreciate that. Very good. All right. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. We've got our email um, address that CPA Hadley and Andy, I have to add you to it, and I just need to get better set on how to do that. But um, it's still, it's just a way for you, if you want to email the whole group, that you can just type that in, that cpahadleyma at gmail.com. And um, it's a way to not have to put in everyone's individual emails. One thing I wanted to ask you is, um, Stuart Saginaw, the the state coalition, um, community preservation coalition has asked for everyone's individual emails, which I was hesitant to do without your guys' permission, because I know we all get a lot of emails. And I could give him the CPA Hadley MA um, email, and then anytime he sent something out, it would go to all of us. They don't send out a huge amount. They send out an update newsletter every so often. They send out if they have um, a class coming up that people can for free, you know, zoom into. Um, they send out like when the state gave the biggest ever, you know, CPA distribution this fall, they sent out an explanation and information on that. So it's, it's not a huge amount, but 
I mean, in the past, what I've been doing is, if it sounded really interesting, I've been sending it on to all of you. Um, but if you'd like, I, I guess I just want your feedback. If you're comfortable with me giving them that CPA Hadley MA, then um, you would all get each. One thing is if anyone found it was too much, then we could, we could switch it at that point too. Um, but just wanted to see what you thought. Let's see what let's see what you do. You know, I I keep getting emails from Stuart Saginaw all the time, so I don't mind them. I don't. I, if I read them, I read them. If I don't, I don't. But you know, I don't mind getting them. And then if it gets to be too much, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. I don't mind getting them. I just feel like if the makeup of our committee is going to change that if you have that one email address, then it's easier for you to just forward appropriately. Well, the, the CP, yeah, the CPA Hadley MA, I can change who that. Right. The distribution from there. Yeah. Right. So it's, that's one thing that's nice about it is, and Edwin, I could tell him to take you off individually since you're already on this other one. Otherwise you'll get everything twice. <laughs> no, that's okay. That's okay. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah, if you could send, I, I would, if you wanted to have them take me off too, if you're going to do it the other way, because I already get them as well. Yeah, yeah. Edwin, does anyone else already get them? Andy, do you? Yes, I do. And I do. So we've already got four. Mary, I also get them. Okay, well then. <laughs> um, I must be the only one who's not getting Stuart's email. Mark, would you like it? And Denise, Diane, would you like it? Or I think it's fine. I may get it. If I do, then I haven't opened it. I'm sorry. Okay. So <laughs> maybe at this point, then I'll just That's ask Diane and Mark and Cassandra. Um, Cassandra, is that okay with you? Yeah, I don't mind getting them and I don't get them already. <laughs> okay. So those three need to be added. That's probably the easiest. And then if you no longer want them, then can just we can contact them so all right very good um yeah i think that's a good way to get communication out <clears throat> the only caveat or caution i would and it's just from sitting on the planning board um next to bill dwyer i would say we we should just be cautious of when we all get that um, actually, I don't remember if it comes to us, if it comes to us kind of blind copied or if we see everyone's address on it, because if you don't see everyone's address, then it doesn't promote um, conversations offline, which would be an open me meeting law um, violation. So, yeah, I, I'm, since I'm not on it, I, I don't see how it how it comes in. But if it comes in and it just shows your email and you can't hit reply all and and have a non-open meeting conversation, then that's great. That's a good point. I, you know, disseminating like the applications or the information for the meeting is, you know, for me to you guys is just one way, no discussion, um, but we shouldn't, you're right. We shouldn't be commenting on, on things as a group. And um, though we can pick up the phone and call each other individually one-on-one, -on -one, but we can't have a quorum talking about anything. Right. Um, so I'm going to share the screen again. Um, I think I've got this up twice here. Okay. Can you see that okay? The, here's back here. So here's the outstanding projects. And the ones here in red are the ones that are supposed to be done by uh, this summer. Um, some are by the annual town meeting and some are by 620. It depends how it was worded um, in the last warrant. But we've got the Plainfield Cemetery restoration, which is done, and that balance can be returned. So we can ask to have that returned. The old Hadley Cemetery restoration, the same thing that's done, and that's the extra funds, um, and that can be returned. The Russell School roof, um, it's at this point, they're hoping to do something with the roof. The 8,000 isn't enough to do a whole lot with it, but they want to at least try to, to 
preserve it what they can with the 8,000. So Tim Nyhart's working on that with Carolyn Brennan and, and, um, that, and the select boards still need to figure out what they wanna do with that. So at this point, it looks like um, they'd like an extension. I'm gonna change that to, um, and then town hall pillars, they have till October, 2023. Um, I'm not sure anything's been done on that yet. The pavilion, the pavilion tables and lights um, are done. Um, they just, they came in this past week and Tim Nyhart and Gary Berg put the tables together and they look great. So they're under the pavilion if you, if you get a chance to see them. The library window and brackets, they're almost done. They just need a little bit of paint and a little one other small thing. So hopefully they'll get that done soon and the rest can be returned um, at the next town meeting. The water testing, I guess I need your guys' help on. Um, the June of two, we, this was voted on reluctantly to approve by the committee because it's really a normal operating expense, which shouldn't be used for CPA funds, but the Board of Health was like, we wanna start testing more in town and there's just no money elsewhere to do it. And we said, this is the last time <laughs> you get to use it. And it was to be used in 2020. Um, however, of course the pandemic hit and the Board of Health has been doing so much. It, they did not test. They tested, a, I think it was 1500. They tested a little bit, but they didn't, they did, really didn't use that money. Um, so now it's supposed to be used within the two years. Um, we can we can vote to say they've had their two years, they didn't use it, or we can extend it. Um, or if somebody, I've reached out to the Board of Health by email several times if somebody wants to try to reach out to them um, to see if, if they want to do anything with this. I'm not quite sure what to do with it. <laughs> I could reach out to the Board of Health. Okay. So it's it's the water testing. They have $1,220 left that was supposed to be used in 2020. Do they, can we close that out? Um, it should be part, right, Amy? It should be part of their normal operating into the future. I, I, Vote. I think when it originally happened, I voted no, or I wanted, yeah, I just didn't, that's what I think. I think it should be part of the regular operational budget if it's something that they have to do. You know, I don't, I never really thought it should be CPA. It shouldn't be CPA. I don't think so either. Uh -huh. um, and they didn't use it. And we said it was only for that year. The pandemic did hit that year. It's, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. Um, are you looking for a motion, Mary? I don't know. Or are um, we just discussing? Well, if Denise wants to reach out to somebody, I okay. you know I tried Susan Moller, I, Mosler. I I emailed also the any numbers I could get off the town website. I emailed, and I just haven't heard back from anyone. Um, so I mean, Mary, we can we can talk about this one in two weeks. Mm -hmm. This is the just the Board of Health. That's how much money we gave them, or we gave them fifteen hundred. I think it was fifteen hundred. Um, we gave them fifteen hundred, um, which was to do North Hadley Pond at Lake Warner. It was to do the reservoir. Um, it might have even been some somewhere else in town, but they they had hoped to increase even what they were doing with water testing and. And they had gotten some water testing a few years before as well. And so it was just, all right, this is the last time is kind of what I remember the discussion being. Um, but it, at this point, it's kind of an unknown. Um, I think if, since it was awarded and voted on, it's probably good to, you know, try again to reach out to them. Mm -hmm. So we can talk about that one in two weeks. And then the Goodwin repairs. Um, so the Goodwin library has had quite a, you know, 
with this, it's about half, almost half a million put into Goodwin over the years for various studies and, and repairs and electrical and walkways and accessibility. And, um, but this one, um, I talked to Tim Nyhart and he, he actually sent me a letter and, and they do expect to, they're, they're trying, again, COVID slowed things down, um, but they do expect to hopefully start working on this in the spring. Um, and he asked if it could be extended for another two years. And the same with the elevator study. Um, the engineer firm ended up short of staff and they weren't able to get anything out of them yet, but he, they, he had talked with them and that sounds like it'll be soon too. So um, those two, he was hoping to extend for another two years. Um, the emergency assistance will be up in the fall. So we can see if anyone has needed to make use of that. I, I want to just say one thing about the uh, maybe the some of the things that we're doing with the town. So such as the Goodwin, the Pillars, all the the Russell School. Um, it's kind of a little bit uh, frustrating to see that we keep uh, we keep give it. They they would come to us. We we award the money, but it's it's not happening. I'm not really sure where where or who we need to talk to or hold accountable or who's going to be, you know, I don't know if we should talk to Carolyn a little bit more and say, listen, can she be the main person? Um, because it just seems, I don't, or maybe the select board, I don't know if it's where the fall is, where it's happening, where if it's, if it's the um, committee that's not getting it done, or if it's um, the DPW that's not getting it done, but it's, it's, this is beginning to be a pattern of things that are um, the items with town hall um, that aren't getting done. Not, well, not just town hall, but town properties. Um, like the cemeteries, they got done just like they promised. Um, a lot of these other things are getting done as promised, but the, the, the town stuff's not. So I think we need to discuss it a little more with whoever is requesting money. Mm. <laughs> I would I would put even a little sharper focus on it and find out whether there's just no motivation to finish the projects or whether they're being stonewalled. Yeah. Because if the town votes for this, it's the law. It's supposed to happen. Hmm. Or they yeah. return the money within two years. Right. And that's that's right. what or they ask for an extension. Right. Right. So so I can ask Tim to come to the next meeting. I didn't know if he'd be here tonight or not, but um, I can ask him to come to the next meeting and, and talk more about it. Um, Thank you. Would you like updated budgets or updated, you know, um, let me get his letter. He did an update on the 9th, January 9th. Um, oh. And oh, so, Sunday. yeah, is, yesterday. Is, yesterday. yesterday. Um, is he the contact person? He who is. Who was taking charge of these particular projects? Yes, yeah. I think he's chair of the, the municipal building committee, which, okay. um, and he okay. said that the Goodwin isn't the, Big one is an ongoing project and requires continued funding. The specifications are nearly complete. We are hopeful the town will be able to go out to bid on this within the next month. Repairs and remodeling should begin early spring. So it hasn't even gone out for bid, um, but they've been working on the specs. Okay. Um, and then the elevator study, the project requirements are being prepared with the hope the town can solicit professional services for completing the project specifications by early spring. So they, it sounds like they don't even have someone lined up to do that, but they're hoping to do it this spring. Um, and then the, the Russell School roof, he said that they need to meet with the select board to determine if they wish to use this money to partially fix some of the roof leaks. This amount will not fix all the roof issues. Some is better than none though. Um, Mm -hmm. And we'll give our committee an answer on this article soon. So, um, okay, so we'll vote either to have the money returned or to extend them at our next meeting. Right, huh. right. Um, and I'll see if he'll 
we'll come to it. Okay. Um, but I think you're right, Amy, there, it's not just the C, the CPA started putting time limits on it just so there'd be some, you know, discussion at least after the two years. Right. Um, and the Goodwin, another time at 85,000 awarded for some work and then they returned 83,000 of it, you know, cause again, it didn't get done. Um, it's, you know, what they're trying to do is convert it to be able to be used for town offices, which sounds like a good use, a good use for the space. So um, hopefully, hopefully this will help with getting that at least to a point where it's usable. Um, they have to decide where they're going to put that bathroom. Yeah, have one on the main floor. Yeah. And it's a lot cheaper, as big a price tag as this is. It's a lot cheaper than trying to build something or, you know, do some other um, major areas. You know, it's right near town hall. It's a good location. It just seems like that's a good use for it. Um, so there's there's that one. But thank you, Amy. I... I <laughs> understand. <laughs> oh, I, I, I think that it's all these projects are good projects. We want to see them all go through. I just question the uh, committee and maybe we need to um, talk to them about getting, because they're not getting done, maybe um, having someone else put on it as well as them to push the projects along. Maybe they're getting stonewalled. Maybe they're having problems. I'm not really sure where it's, where it's falling uh, short. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, the emergency, the clock repair we heard about, and then the APRs. Um, Edwin, do you have any updates on Hanrich or Grillinski? As far as I know, they are done. But okay. That doesn't mean anything. It means I just don't know. We're going to have a meeting tomorrow, and we'll, I will ask about that. And if so they're on. completely done, and that's that should have been. This is how much is still available. So it hasn't been paid for, I would think. This is updated as of 1231. Right. Let me see, Hanrich was ATM 21. That's the full amount that was awarded. So it looks money-wise like it's not finished. Um, and again, it's, it is to be used by next year. So it's not a press for now but right yeah but we got to make a decision on it and why have it hanging around well we don't have to it's they have until may of 23 so right. it's you know we the north hadley cemetery and russell cemetery are um hopefully will start soon um and the hockenham fence is the town hall is working on the bid package so again hopefully that'll go out soon um but and hopefully they'll be done by the fall Historic maps are done. Um, thank you, Andy, for your part in that. Um, and that can be returned. And then the town hall pillars again. The golden court windows, we'll talk about the grant agreement. Um, and then the picnic tables are just done. So the bills haven't been paid yet, but that's, an, and then the library or mural they're gonna work on shortly. Right. So I think, except for the um, municipal building committee projects, things are, are moving right along, so. Um, that's where we're at. So I guess next week we'll vote on all at once, returning the balance or doing an extension altogether. Um, any questions on any of that? Should I have, I have a question and it's there. It's one that's not listed. The, uh, Hopkins, um, fields, it looks like they, it's not listed because they used probably all their money. Correct. I think. Now, um, they were coming back to us at one point for a phase two. Um, and then I would believe the fall town meeting, the last town meeting, they said, you know, where they weren't ready. So they are going to come back in the spring. But I didn't see anything. I don't think on the agenda that they're back. I didn't hear anything from them. They they in October 2017, they got 400,000. And then in May of 2019, they got 185,000. So they've gotten 585,000 for the fields. Mm -hmm. um, well, there was two phases. And so that was okay. what they planned and they did do the fields, but I think that they were gonna talk about just like 
the um, they had equipment similar so to what the other ones are doing. Yeah, I'm sorry they didn't they didn't contact us, but hopefully they'll be ready for the next one. Yeah. Um, thank you, Amy. If yeah. if you know of who to ask about that, maybe you know you could. Um, well, Paul Pfeiffer is the one, well, at least the one that was used to report to us. I last year I had the superintendent sent me an email asking when they could come in, and then I had told her. Um, Maybe it's just too much going on, but it was the superintendent and Paul Pfeiffer's who was sending me the emails from the school committee. Okay. So those are the two that we're asking. And as I recall, both of those distributions were for their phase one. And yeah. when they showed me what they wanted for phase two, a lot of it was problematic. So we just have to make sure that they're asking for stuff that's uh, approved use. Like it can't be soccer balls or, you know, baseball. Well, well they wanted to put in um, uh, concrete dugouts on the bleachers. baseball field. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, well, bleachers, it's funny. Bleachers are the exact opposite of what Mark just said, apparently, where movable bleachers are okay, but permanent bleachers are not okay. I don't know why. Hmm. That we'd run by Stuart. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, any, any other comments on this? Uh, so we're, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I'm having a hard time seeing this. Shouldn't the, whoever's responsible for that money be asking for an extension? Or are we just going to say, what are you going to do about it? And are you going to ask, ask for an extension or not? So the only ones that are asking for an extension, um, Tim Nyhart basically asked for in this memo. Um, and again, I, I thought he might be here tonight, but um, he asked for the Russell School roof and the good the two for the Goodwin. So that covers those three. Um, and I'll, I'll ask him to come to the next meeting. Okay. And then the other one was the Board of Health. So we'll see, you know, Denise will reach out and we'll, we'll see if we get any updates for, you know, two weeks from now. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, and then the rest are all returning money, and it's actually a bit of money, thirty six thousand, and yeah, um, which is great. Okay, um, and then again, the two that we have proposed are those. Just, mm -hmm. just I put it in the website. Here's just a quick list of all the APRs. 1,335 acres so far have been, have had some use of CPR funds to put, to conserve them. So that's uh -huh. wonderful. Yeah. Um, okay. So the next one is the grant um, for Golden Court. Um, And share again. Actually, I'm going to see if I can do that. Agreement, correct? Zoom. I'm going to make this a little bigger. Be harder to um, screen. Can you all see the Community Preservation Act grant agreement? Yep. So the, the lawyer added to the warrant wording for the windows for Golden Court that there had to be an approved grant agreement signed before, you know, as part of the condition of them getting the funds. And um, so I asked in town hall about it and, and um, apparently this wording has been there before, but maybe there's never been a grant agreement produced. <laughs> so. The Chad Howard at the Amherst Housing Authority has asked a few times, can he go ahead with this project? Where does it stand? And so um, I, because of the, the state coalition, they have sample grant agreements and there was seemed like a boilerplate one that uh, quite a few towns have used. So I, I did pull that up and went through it and tried to tweak it to Hadley. I ran it by Andy because I didn't know if he had 
had any experience with these and he had some good suggestions to them. So we, we went through, I don't know if you've had a chance to read it through, um, but basically what the grant agreement does is try to really emphasize that the fund should only be used for approved CPA uses and that, you know, spelling out what their obligations are and what, what, you know, what to expect. So here's the, you know, the description was right off their application, um, 75,000 and the terms is two years um, from October 16th, 2021, or it'll be returned. And then um, they must submit a complete budget pro project, which they did with their application. Um, and then it says every six months until the completion date, they shall provide the Hadley Select Board. We didn't make it the CPA since we don't meet so often, you know, a written update on the progress. And then a final report, including digital photo documentation, of the project or appropriate, it is due within 30 days after the completion date. And then there has to be satisfaction of the Hadley Select Board. Um, and then, you know, the photos, videos, whatever submitted to the Hadley Select Board become the property of the town of Hadley and deed restrictions. Um, Yeah. And so this this is requiring real property, which this doesn't apply, um, and it has to follow through with the laws of the Community Preservation Act, and they have to get their own permits, and there's no liability of the town, um, and then they agree to post, um, while the work is being done, a sign, which we have, thanks to Denise, saying that, you know, it's a CPA project, um, and then that's the entire agreement. So it's pretty, I mean, it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. um, kind of spells it out. And I talked to, I hadn't heard back. I, I did call Carolyn Brennan and just last week and she said she thought it was fine. We should send it over. Um, so be, since it was so close to this meeting, I before I did that, I wanted to um, just make sure you're all okay with it. And um, now Stuart Saginaw, the coalition thinks every project should have a grant agreement just to kind of spell it out. But especially the farther it seems from right from the center of town um, or the town of Hadley, um, he feels it's a good idea to have something like this. Um, Does this go through the town council to get blessed? I, well, you know, first, I mean, I sent this to her like in October. <laughs> and. and at first she said, oh, we'll run it through the town council. But yesterday or Friday, she said, you know, we're spending so much money on the town council right now. She doesn't really want to send another thing. She said this, I mean, this is pretty, pretty um, straightforward. It's not, you know, and it is kind of what many towns use. So she thought it was fine to just send it. Um, yeah. Is there anything in there about liability not being on us? Yes. Um, I thought I saw it. it. I thought I saw it, yeah. Number nine. No liability of town by making this award, the town of Hadley and the Hadley CPC do not accept any liability whatsoever for any acts, omissions, or errors associated with the project. Recipients agree to identify, indemnify, and defend the town of Hadley and the Hadley CPC from all claims, suits, or demands yep. resulting from the implementation of the project. Right. Okay. Mary, I think you did your usual great job. Yes. It's, um, we've got it now if we want to use it for any others, but um, the, it was the attorney that put that language in the, the warrant, so we may see it other times as well. All right. Well, I will, he'll be very relieved. I'll, I'll send this over. And um, it does, I think um, it does say, this to, I think I might take this off because if we're not running it by the town solicitor, then that won't. I mean, right now it has it signed by the town of Hadley, the chair of the CPC. Um, mm. I don't know. I mean, again, this is what other town and a lot of towns are huge, um, but maybe just signed by the town administrator and the chair of the Hadley <coughs> CPC is enough. Yeah, we're going to trust your judgment on that. Yeah. 
I, I mean, if you're going to add anything, um, you might maybe just the chair of the select board only because you mentioned the select board so often in it saying they're responsible for it. That's a good idea. Yeah. Yep. I now, guess I should go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. Who is going to keep this document? Um, you know, Amy, I will say that by the town administrator signing it, isn't that kind of cover the select board? Um, or not really? It's hard to, well, I don't know. She works for the select board. Um, can't, can't hurt to have the chair of the select board read it. Right. I think I better send it before I send it to Amherst, just so that I don't, I'd hate for him to get to the end and not want to sign it after. <laughs> Who said this? Mm. This is um. What did someone else say? Did I miss? Who is going to keep the document, the actual signed document? Is it going to be in town hall or is it going to be in CPA records? I think it should be in town hall with a copy, in the chair of the CPA. Because again, we don't meet so often. That's why a lot of the response, you know, the final okay, it's done you know, is through the select board and the updates are through the select board. Okay, Do you just, agree or? I, well, I agree. I just think that they're not going to realize they're going to have to do it. So you're going to have to tell them. Okay. Okay. Well, I think too, here's the other thing is um, if you're giving it to the select board to um, sign off, like for the chair, they will just run it by one of their committees, even if they just are one of their, uh, meetings, even if it's part of the consent agenda, but if it is part of the consent agenda, then it is in the docs that are um, on their meeting. So it is then able to go back and look at it. Um, so it, I mean, it's just helpful when you want to put it in um, record. Okay. All right. I will send it to Carolyn Brennan again and to David Phil and say where we'd like to send this over to the Amherst Housing Authority to from the October meeting. Um, good. All right. So the, um, the website has everyone's expiring terms. Actually, the terms are for three years. And um, the select board appoints three, the at large, but the various, as you know, departments appoint their own representatives. So um, we just need coming up at the ends of the fiscal year, June of 30th of 22. Um, Denise Barstow, if you want to be a representative again, if you can just get a, a letter from the Historic Commission, um, and it would be for another three year term. And um, if I think the letter needs to go to me and to Jessica um, Spank Neville, and she'll because she keeps a record of when everyone's term is up. Um, and then the same, Diane, with you. I don't know what your plans are, but. Um... We were having a little discussion about this because I know you had brought this up at I think maybe our last and probably the meeting before that as well. And I was mentioning to Greg, like to look in the files to send a letter to you, but he thought that it comes from me. It but I thought that would be odd, me. like me appointing myself. So, and I thought like Jenny and Kathy did it before then. No, you don't do it. You don't appoint yourself. You, right. It has to be from the committee. Okay, you know, so would the letter be from from Greg, the director, or from like the commissioners? It's from the commissioners, the Park and Rec commissioners, because they even though they I am elect, a commissioner, right? But okay, so they elect um, who their representative is. Okay. Right. Um, and but you, yeah, you don't appoint yourself. But you mm -hmm. can write the letter for the commission saying okay. on this day, we had a vote saying that I am going to be the representative for the next three years. Okay. I, I was not clear on that because I thought in the past it was always the director. So with Greg being new, um, I'm glad we clarified that. So we will get that together and then to you. Thanks. Great. Um, good. And then the last one is the, um, for the housing authority. <laughs> which um, is Richard Whitkiss, and I, I still haven't met him. I, 
<laughs> I still haven't seen him at a meeting. So I, I don't know. Um, I don't know how, what we can do to try to, uh, I'll, you know, when I send this information to Chad Howard, I'll mention that his term is coming up. Yep. I mean, the three on the, it's Richard Witkus and John Yusko and um, Christine Yuzerski are the three, at least as of last fall that are on the housing authority. So, um, mm -hmm. and it specifically says housing authority needs to be the representative. So that's kind of a limit. Um, I don't, I guess we'll just say, ask them to appoint a representative and we'll see, you know, if, if it's him again or, or who it is. Right. But the law specifically says the housing authority. So um, yeah. I think we'll, um, I'll get my planning board uh, appointment at our next meeting. You're, you're not up yet. That's oh, okay. Yeah. That's you're not annual. Okay. You're up in 2023 as Andy is and I am. Okay. And Amy's 24 and Edwin's 24. So it's just those three this year. So um Hypothetically, <laughs> like, uh, what if my term as a commissioner ends before my term on CPA? Then do they reelect someone? Because I think that's what happened with me, unless you run for reelection. Okay, because I think that's what happened with Andy and myself. Like Andy Kopaki, you know, ended his term and then just kind of had me transition. So your term will be up in 2025, and if you were okay. to leave, so whoever they appoint will then fulfill the rest of your term and still be up 2025. Okay, great. But it does need to be an active member of yeah. the um, I just rec. figured might as well clarify that too while yeah. we're yeah. talking about it. Okay. Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, I'll try to keep a little better track of it this time. <laughs> well, I've got it now. Uh, it's right on the website. Okay. when everyone's term is up and we'll we'll check each january and and um and make sure you know people know it's coming up um any feedback on the cpa website we worked with jennifer on trying to make it a little more clear and friendly and um to know if anyone had any comments i didn't have a chance to look at it so That's i apologize. fine i i really like it uh, at first, I couldn't find out where to download the form, but that's because the button is right there. So obvious that I didn't see it. <laughs> I did add a little wording to say, push the button. <laughs> yeah. yeah. In plain sight. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> but uh, it's a big improvement. It's it's terrific. Well, it's um, trying to make it really easy for people to find what they're looking for. So it's got the bylaws. It's got what we've done in previous projects and the application form and then really clearly when the applications are due and who's on the committee and then some pictures of some of the projects. Does it have a link to the coalition website? It does. It does. Okay. Yeah. That's it. Then. Yeah. And um, I just wanted to check one quick thing. Um, so one member of the Parks and Recreation Commission as designated by the commission. So it's not a staff person either that can be appointed. It's a member of the commission right. that, that is appointed. Okay. And it's just weird. It says for initial term of one year and thereafter a term of three years, which is really strange and not what Hadley's been doing, but um, they tend to just do the three years. Okay. It, it is a member of the, um, and then the member of the long range planning committee that no longer is in existence. So that's why there's an extra at large. Right. But that's that. Okay. Um, really just about the last thing that the, Jessica just sent out in September, the conflict of interest form to have everyone acknowledge it, but I maybe she's gotten on a different schedule because she did just send them out again. Um, and you're supposed she I think she wants you to acknowledge to me and then so it's just me acknowledging to her. And I was wondering if I could just ask you <laughs> instead of you all sending in me this form that said that you got it. Um, I don't remember getting it. Okay. Oh, I just don't. I'm just not aware of it. Okay. 
He did uh, one before, um, or we talked about it and we did it. And I talked, I think I had yours, Edwin, or we did. You can, yeah. yeah there was something, but the problem was, is that was when there was the old HR person. And so the HR person's not there anymore. I think then it went to Jessica. Well, she's, she went, yeah. She has to have this done again. For... I think it's, you don't need signatures. I think if we can just say that, you know, we abide by town rules and everybody just raise their hand, that's good enough. <laughs> and, and what you're doing is you're acknowledging that you received from her the notice of electronic access to the summary of the conflict of interest law. Um, so you're just saying you even received the information from her. So Edwin, we'll, we'll send look... that to you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mary, it looks like you sent it to us on um, January 2nd. Okay. So there's not a form that we have to sign? There, well, the last page had a form to sign, but it's just an acknowledgement. And I think she just wants me to um, give her a thing that says that everyone on the committee has acknowledged it. Um, Is that annual or biannual? I can't remember. Well, so there's two things. She sent the information, but the test that I went on and did it, um, the thing that you do online in the state is every other year. And then that you get a certificate and it says to send the certificate copy to Jessica. So that's different for, this is just that you acknowledge that you've received the information from her. And then I think it's up to you every other year to make sure you do go online and do the little, takes about an hour. Um, you read about all the sections, take the little couple questions at the, each, the end of each section and then move on. And if you don't get it right, that you get another chance. You, you basically, yeah, there it is. Yeah. You get it right. Okay. I can't eat it. Yeah. Yeah. I will check. I, I, ha I have to do it for my job for UMass and I have to do it for here. So I can't remember which year I'm in. So. Okay. Well, I'm not keeping track of that. I just want to know <laughs> if you got the information. So Diane, you definitely did because you it's on January 2nd. Anyone else remember Amy? I did. Denise? I got it, Cassandra. Cassandra, thank you. I think I got it. I did it. Mine is uh, November 6th, 2021. Okay. So if you want to send a copy to Jessica of your certificate. Okay. Oh, I, I did. I did one. Okay. I, one and I, I did, did mine. Um, Mark, do you remember getting the information? I kind of remember seeing an email, but I know that I haven't going online yeah it's not this is this is just saying that you acknowledge that you received the information <laughs> looking through my gmails to see if i january 2nd yep i'm looking I'm on, I'm up to i can one. send it again too i'm gonna send it to edwin yeah i'm not sure that you have to take the test again mark if you've taken it mary thayer ethics another. reminder i got it okay okay from jessica spank nibble Thanks, Neville. She, she always gets the most votes of anybody. <laughs> All right. So I'll accept Edwin and Edwin, I'll send it to you and just ask you to email me back that you received it. And then, then we'll thank you. Um, so next um, meeting date is in two weeks. And we'll vote on the applications and discuss any other business. I'll do up the warrant art, suggested warrant articles to go with it. Yep. Um, and I'll assume that we're going to adjust, we're accepting to take the money back that's already ready to be returned. And so because some of that's historic bucket. Um, and then we'll, we'll go from there. Does anyone have anything else? Um, I just want to say that I'm really happy to be back on the committee as a voting member and to thank those of you who helped make it possible and supported me. We, we, we cheered you coming back on, but you weren't on the meeting yet. So you missed that part. <laughs> yeah, well, what can I say? <laughs> no, it was- Thank you, Mark, for confusing. calling me. <laughs> it was very confusing. Um, good, well, thank you everyone. And I'll see you in two weeks and, and have a okay, good- Okay, I move we adjourn tonight's meeting. Okay. okay. Nice work, Mary. Thank, thank you, everyone. Good leadership. Oh, thank you. All right. Good night. Bye bye.